Wow, stories. Am I the idiot for no longer accepting calls from the previous owner of my house? My BF and I bought our first home from an elderly couple in January of 2022. Initially, I kept in contact with one of them, let's call her Barb, in the event that we might receive some of their mail or something. Contact was very occasional and was always something along the lines of asking if I received a package of hers or that she wanted to mail us a key that she found that went to the lock on our shed. Months after we moved in, around early October, we received some dining chairs in a box addressed to Barb. A day or two later, a repeat of the exact same shipment arrived. I attempted to contact Barb, but my calls would not go through. A few weeks later I came home from work and my BF, who frequently gets home before me, told me that he was starting to feel guilty about the situation and asked me to follow him to our garage. Apparently packages containing furniture and decor had been coming regularly for weeks and we now had a garage full of boxes that were not addressed to us. My boyfriend had been storing the boxes and assuming the shipments would stop, but they continued. We doubled down and tried harder to contact Barb with the help of other neighbors. We finally got in touch with her and she explained that she had lost her phone and that was why I was unable to contact her for some time. I explained the situation to her and she gave me permission to open some of the items so I could describe them to her. She then told me that she had not ordered any of the items. It turns out that prior to moving, Barb had a friend of hers help her order furniture for her new home as she can't see well and was having trouble navigating the furniture website. This friend used her own computer to order Barb's things as a favor. I immediately became concerned that Barb was being robbed, and I urged her to contact her bank first, and then her friend second. Barb let me know days later that the charges were not fraudulent. It was a simple case of forgetting to change the shipping address, and the friend wanted to set up a time to come pick up her furniture from me. I explained that myself and my BF work a lot, and I wanted to set up a time when I wouldn't be home alone. I don't know this person, and I couldn't lift half of the furniture by myself to move it anyway. I began receiving calls from Barb and her friend day and night asking me to find the time to let them collect the items. After a few weeks, my BF and I finally had a weekend off together. I messaged both Barb and her friend with a day and time and received no reply from either person. By the first of the year, still nothing. I began receiving calls again at the end of January, after we had already gotten rid of most of the items since we had not heard back. I have not been answering the calls. It has been over a year that we have lived here and several months since we received the furniture. Am I the idiot here? Edit. I was not home when any of the items were delivered. I work long hours. I waited three months prior to getting rid of the stuff with no contact from Barb or her non-elderly friend. I did not have an address for either individual. The much younger friend is the actual owner and order of the items, not the elderly woman. She failed to change the shipping address after ordering items of her own months after she helped Barb order furniture. The elderly woman was not out any money because of this, but her friend is and I understand that makes me an idiot. Additionally, I did not sell any of the items. I gave some away and threw away others. Last, Barb is the one who has called me twice this month. I have not heard anything from the friend who is the actual owner of the items. Not the idiot. You've been more than understanding and tried to get them their packages, but over a year later this isn't your problem. Laws differ by location, but they typically require that you make a reasonable effort to get the package to the correct recipient. You've satisfied that. Everyone sucks here. You became an idiot when you got rid of all the stuff. There were other solutions here, including, as others have said, leaving it all outside on a planned day for them to come and get, scheduling it when just BF is home, allowing them to pay for return shipping, and many other things. Giving it all away was not a smart way to handle this. Definitely a legal liability concern now. Am I the idiot for asking my husband to return a gift? In December, my husband asked what I wanted for Christmas, and I told him the UGG Ultra Minis. By that point, they were sold out and on back order. I kept checking occasionally in case they did come back in stock, but they didn't. Fast forward to the week after Christmas. I found a near-identical pair of boots from L.L. Bean, and ran it by my husband first since one. We just got done with Christmas and it's not exactly a small gift in two. In case he did order a pair and was waiting for them to get in. 
He encouraged me to get them, so I did. I have been very happy with them and put the UG version out of my mind. For the last couple of weeks he has been saying he got me a great gift for Valentine's Day that I will love and hyping it up. This morning I went to the kitchen to find flowers, candy, a card, and the UG boots. I told him thank you but I was confused because I had the other pair that he told me to order. He acknowledged that he did but thought I could use a second pair anyways, saying he thought the stitching was different. I asked about returning them because I don't need two pairs of essentially the same shoe and he got upset because it was $25 to get them shipped and another $25 to return, so we would be out $50. I put the shoes and box away in our closet. I told some friends who followed me on my hunt for these boots, and one offered to buy the extra pair which would get us out of the $25 return cost. I told my husband, and he got even more upset, saying he would deal with it, and took the box out of the closet. I appreciated the gift and told him so, but I just don't need two pairs of pricey boots. Now I'm getting the silent treatment. I genuinely feel bad because he was so excited about it, and now I'm wondering if I just should have gone along with it. Am I the idiot? Edit. To clear some things up. My husband ordered the Uggs in mid-December, but they were back-ordered until March. They happened to get delivered last week. They weren't even meant to be a Valentine's gift. My shoes last forever. I have 16- and 10-year-old Uggs, different styles that have little wear. I work from home, so most days I don't even wear shoes. Most of the shoes in my closet have dust. What did I get my husband for Valentine's Day? He doesn't like gifts. I ask every year and he always says nothing, but he'll buy golf shoes or clubs throughout the year, which is fine. Yesterday I got him some weed and tonight he's getting some NSFW entertainment. His favorite gift will probably be finding this post with internet strangers telling me I was in the wrong, if he hasn't already. I know people find Uggs to be ugly. That's fine. My husband also finds them ugly, but he likes them better than my Chacos. Not the idiot. All of the YTA votes are baffling. You told him what you wanted for Christmas, they weren't available. After Christmas, you found something you wanted instead, and confirmed with him that he didn't and wasn't getting the Uggs. So you got the new boots, and you don't want two near-identical pairs of boots. Makes sense to me. I was leaning toward NAH until he started getting weird about it. Not the idiot. But I'll fully admit I have a very different view of gifts than most. You explicitly talked to your husband before you got your current pair of boots. You did this because you didn't want to ruin the gift if he planned to get it. It seems pretty clear that you were not interested in owning both pairs. It stops being a thoughtful gift when your husband buys something you have expressly said you aren't interested in.